This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God. Read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 3, this is Section 4, Last and Final Part 2. Defining Sickness as Ordering of Thought Part 2 It can be as subtle as wishing something was different than it is. The ordering of thought and our preferences, that is what we are talking about. The mind that believes it can order its own thought is a mind that is sick but it does not want to see how sick it is. It does not want to see that it is wrong. Making it seem as if things happen to the body, with no connection to the mind, gives proof of its vulnerability and justifies guilt. It is about bringing it back to the mind and seeing just what the cause of sickness is. Sickness is wrong-mindedness. It is a sick interpretation of reality. The wrong mind is an assertion that I am what I wish to be instead of what God created. Sickness has to be traced back to the question of where it came from. Did it come from God? That is the ultimate question it comes back to every time. It is just that simple. Friend, I have used this and other ideas in the course to feel guilty because many times the healing is not automatic. I feel that I have a clue about what is going on. But then I think I must be kidding myself. I must not really understand it at all because I am not healed instantly. David If you see it in, the, in that context, it can seem frustrating. It is kind of like our trip when we went to buy some audio equipment and you notice the frustrations coming up about the attendant who seemed to be waiting on us. Once again, it is that whole backwards thinking of judging based on appearances. First, you see the attendant appear. He seems to have wandering eyes or something. You ask a straightforward question and you see a sort of pause or hesitation and the mind starts concluding immediately. Friend, concluding that he does not know anything about this stuff. David, and the frustration there begins. But when you take little incidents like this, you start to think, By golly, I keep reading meaning into everything that I see. You can see that the mind is just looking at the littlest things and reading meaning into them all the time. But what if you suspected that these are dream figures that you are just giving meaning to and that the meaning you give has no meaning at all in reality. That throws the scenario of going shopping and expecting an attendant to know what he is doing into a larger context. It had nothing at all to do with getting the audio equipment. Those are just the things that get done. It will get done but it cannot be the focal point 
or the intention. Because if it is, then forgiveness is not. Then my one function is on a back burner or on a side burner at least because the mind is set. It is going to do something. It has an objective in mind. It does not matter if the object is to buy something or to learn as much as one can about it from a knowledgeable, trained professional. It does not really matter what the expectations are. What matters is that it is an opportunity to hold your intention out front and to remove all kinds of judgment from the script, from the scenario, about how it should go. When I think I know how it should be going, that is where the trouble starts. That is when the frustration comes up. There are thoughts like, This is less than optimal. I have defined what optimal is and this is not meeting the mark. You can see where impatience or frustration would come in with that. Someone may say we are getting way off track. What does this have to do with sickness? It has everything to do with sickness. Sickness is exactly what it is. You could also say that we are being so picky. It perhaps seems awfully small. But in the end, that is all we have to go for. We have to keep trying to train our minds to hold that intention and to let go of everything we think we know. There was another golden opportunity when the attendant was ringing everything up at the end. There was something about the price. It is funny to watch how the mind flips and jumps at things like that. The mind just thinks it knows how it has all got to work out. He is merely ringing it all up and coming up with his figures. But there was a lot going on in the mind. I know you just finally said, I want to leave. Is it okay if I just go out and sit in the car? How are you feeling? Was it all a whirl or was there frustration involved at that time? Friend, I was just feeling like it was just useless for me to be there. I had some frustration and impatience and I did have some judgment about this man's lack of expertise. I had thoughts about how it would have been just as helpful if we had bought everything home and just played with it there instead of spending all that time there with him which did not seem particularly beneficial. A lot of it was just standing around looking at each other. David There was obviously a holy encounter there, right? Every encounter we have is a holy encounter. And what is it that obscures the holy encounter? Friend. Expectation. Judgment. Interpretation. David. Interpretation. I mean this is the holiest of all encounters. Because every encounter we have is simply an opportunity to see our brother completely without the past. Take away the thought of radio shack salesman. That is just a learned concept. Take away radio shack. Take away competent or incompetent. 
take away wasted time and ideas of just looking at one another. The mind always thinks there is something much more productive to be doing or that there is a better place to be. What about asking, what is the purpose? When you hold the purpose out in front, the other things seem to get done anyway. Versus wanting to jump in with the mind thinking, If only I could just sit around talking about the course, then I would be happy. If you put it in the course terms, only God's plan for salvation will work. What is God's plan for salvation? Change your mind about your mind. That is it. That is it. In this instant, change your mind about your mind. Then there is the ego's plan. If only something had happened differently. If someone acted differently. If I was in a different place. If this event had happened. If this circumstance was different than it is. Something on the screen has to change. But the only thing that does not change is the ego's plan is changing my mind about my mind. That I do not have to do. I can be right about who I think I am. It is something on the screen that has to change. That kind of lays it out. There is God's plan. There is the ego's plan. Jesus says in Lesson 71 that this seems preposterous to you. But in fact, you will see that you do believe in the preposterous if you observe your life, if you observe your mind. Precisely what you are trying to do all the time is to change something external to bring about salvation. It will never work. Obviously, that is going to cost the whole world that you think you know and the whole world you think you see. Friend, Can you talk about the idea of what is most useful? I guess I want some clarity on it. David You can put it in the context of the first few pages, stages in the development of the trust section of the course. First you go through a stage where you begin to have a sense that everything is helpful. Wherever the body seems to be, Whatever it seems to be doing, it is all helpful. The next step is about increasing the helpfulness. What will increase the helpfulness? It is still a phase. It is obviously an illusion because the mind still thinks it knows in some sense what will actually increase the helpfulness. It is a stepping stone. But the next stage is the realization that all the teacher of God wants is to let go of the false and to accept the true. But he has no sense of what the false and the true are. His mind is so tied into sacrifice and into the belief in the reality of form that he does not know. So that early stage of what do I do to increase the helpfulness 
is really a very early stepping stone. Because it still involves changing circumstances to suit. There is a very subtle ego draw to want to make a haven to hide from the guilt. The Course talks about it in terms of the special love relationship. But you could have a student on the spiritual path trying to find the easiest, most helpful path and still kind of sliding into the haven of thinking that it is most helpful to stay in a quiet environment forever, sitting around and talking comfortably, when actually it is really about just staying attentive. You can use any situation that seems to be on the screen to instantaneously bring your attention back, to look at your reaction and use that as a starting point, to catch it when you are making an interpretation that is hurting you. This gets away from wanting to find a certain place or a certain activity that will be most helpful. Remember, frustration always comes from our own interpretation. There is nothing happening out there. <laughs>